Hey, what's up, guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And I just released around about 80 minutes of training about abstract flower compositions like this one, okay? And you can see a little bit more about the content here. So you will find these lessons one, two, three, and four on my Patreon. But of course, here on YouTube, I also want to share some knowledge with you. Just be sure that the full package of abstract plants and flower composition knowledge you will get on my Patreon, okay? So let me just continue here to show you some beautiful examples. For example, these ones are pretty wild and I really love these two, okay? But you can also just be a bit more realistic with the roses and the green plants here and just build something beautiful like this one, okay? And of course, as I just showed you in After Effects, you can also animate it. And of course, you will get more about nature and growth systems with plants and flowers on my Patreon. Okay, so these ones are also beautiful examples and you will get lessons for that stuff over on my Patreon. But as I said, I also want to share some knowledge with you guys here on YouTube. So I would say without talking too much about it, let's just jump into Cinema 4D and have some fun. So don't expect here on YouTube in the short lesson to get the full knowledge, but I will try to do a decent job here and try to provide you here with some helpful knowledge. Okay, so this is my final scene and it will just take too much time to rebuild this one and just go through all of the settings. So I would say let's just start with a new scene and build something from scratch. All right, so I just made a clean scene here and I think we don't want to start with a sphere, but maybe we want to start with a helix. All right, let's just do it like this. And maybe I will just change this a little bit to put it to 20 by 20 and we can give it a couple more rotations, something like this one. Then press C to make this one editable. Press M I to go to the magnet tool, just make the magnet a bit bigger and I will just distort this a little bit. Now you can see you get some crazy wiggles along your spline. So to prevent this one, just set this one to B spline, M I to go back to the magnet tool and I set this one to 70 or even 40, something smaller to get some other shapes here. So let's just do it like this one. And honestly, I will not spend too much time here because we want to keep this one fast and it's more about the technique, all right? All right, so now I will just create a capsule here. Let's put it over there. Let's make it a bit more short and give it a lot of segments, something like this one. I think we need more height segments. So I will put this one to 200 or 400, something like this. Okay, I'll make it a bit more narrow. And then I would say we just wrap this one along the helix. All right, so let's just do it like this one. There you go. And uh, this is not what you want. Okay, so put this one to plus Y. Press NA to get rid of the lines. Now you can see you get this shape here and maybe we just want to spice this up a little bit and I would say let's use a displacer. Let's put it beneath the spline wrap. Let's put a noise into it and yeah let's just make this one bigger something like this one. Let's go into the noise. Let's make the noise bigger to something like this one. Okay that's a pretty crazy shape. So I think we can just put this one into a builder and a measure. Let's put it into the builder. Now you get this strange blob here. Go into the measure. Put this one into a remesh to get a shape like this one. Okay, not exactly what you thought. So go into the builder, put this one to three, for example. Okay, now we get some beautiful blob here and B to see the lines. Maybe we put this one to two, for example, and we can also put a subdivision smooth into it. Put this one to one. Let's put this one to 1.5 or even to one. We just want to have some abstract shape here. I think this will be a good start. So press C to make this one editable. This will be good enough. Okay, it's just really fast. Okay, so don't blame me because this is not perfect, but we just want to have an invisible shape where we can clone onto. Now let's put a cloner into the scene. And of course, for a result like this one, you need to work with plant assets. Okay, but just because we want to go fast here, I will just show you the basic principles with something more simple. So for example, we could use a capsule. All right, I think the capsule is way too big. So press T to scale this one down to something like this one. Now put the capsule into the cloner and clone this one onto our invisible shape, for example, like this one. Now put this one to render instance or even to multi instance. And now put this one, for example, to 3000. Okay, now this looks pretty wild. I think it's also because the rotation in the pitch is wrong. So put this one to 90. Go into the capsule, put this one to 2 or 1.5. And now when you press NA, you can see that you have a lot of capsules on your invisible mesh. Maybe we want to have even more 
more. Put this one to 4,500. Okay, that's cool. And I think it's way too big. So press T to scale this one down. I think this is getting better. But honestly, I think I want to have way more of these ones. Okay, that's nice. And now you will just, for example, use a random effector here. But we don't want to randomize position, but we want to randomize, for example, the scales. So let's just give it a little bit of difference here. Now you can see you just get a more interesting shape there. And I think we can also go to the rotation and, for example, put all of these ones to 10. Now they are not just perfectly aligned. You could even put this one to 15 by 15. OK, this is nice. And now you could, for example, put a shader effector into the mix, but set the shader effector to minus one. Now everything is disappearing. But what you want to do is to put a noise here into the shader. And now let's just go into the noise. Let's put this one, for example, to 800. And let's just try to get some other values here. And now you can see that your clones not appear everywhere, but there is like an invisible noise which dictate where you can see the clones and where you can't see the clones. Maybe this is a bit too big. So you could do something like this one, for example. All right. And this is already a lot of the knowledge that I used in my scene. But for example, to just make this one more interesting, I think we could, for example, put this one to 360, do something like this one. And I think now that we want to just make these clones just bigger, for example, something like this one. All right. And then you just create another cloner system. And inside of this one, you could probably use a sphere, for example, press T to scale the sphere down. All right. Now you will get another cloner system. And for this one, you can also use another shader. So just go into the effectors here, put another shader into it. Let's kill the other one. And for this one, you can, for example, change the noise system, or you could also just change the seed. And of course, you can put different colors onto these ones. Okay, so now you will have some blue ones, some red ones here. I think the red is just a bit too big. So just go into it, put this one to two. All right, you can duplicate this one. And for example, put a gray color onto this one. Then just duplicate the shader, put this shader into this one, kill the other one, go into this one and you could, for example, restrict this just a bit more and make it a little bit harder on the contrast. Now you can see you get some areas where you just have the gray clones active. And overall, of course, now you could select all of these ones, go into it and, for example, put some animation onto it. All right. And now when I would scrub through my timeline, you will already see that some motion is going on. You have an abstract growth system here going on. But of course, this is only the simple basics on how to build a system like like this one, but you can already see the noise here, how it is growing in the scene. And this is exactly what I just did right now. And overall, I would say that this is already a good glimpse into the technique behind these sculptures. Of course, as I already mentioned, you just have to not use spheres and tubes or capsules, but you will use high quality plant assets. And then with some random and shader effector action, you can easily create such beautiful images like these ones. OK, of course, I will also show you how you can make a more interesting basic shape where you can clone onto. But when you will use all of these ingredients, then easily you can create something amazing. OK, so sorry, this lesson was really short, but if you use the technique right, then you can create such powerful images like these ones. Okay. So thank you so much for your time. See you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.